the MLK theme song. Looks like we are connecting. It's making this connection. Do you want to love somebody? All right, let's go. Let's rock. Listen, let's I rock. I'm, I'm way in another country, but listen, I, I, I can't forget. Man. How can I forget? Oh man, this is this is Martin Luther King Day on this mega magical Monday. Man, I love this song. I was telling my wife this morning. I was like, "Baby, this is I, I I so remember this like it's yesterday because this was one of the most popular songs for me and my mom. Well, if if oh. anything, so okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, let me hey, share you, this, bro. man. I'm sharing it, man. I'm clicking share and then I'm saying there it is. So I just shared it. All right, okay, there we nice. are, man. All right, well, let's rock and roll then. Brother David, how you feeling today on this magical Monday? I'm doing good, man. I'm 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 doing well. Let me let me make sure this thing is muted so I don't mess anything up. Pause. There it is. Yeah, I'm doing well, bro. Okay. I'm I'm here. I'm feeling I'm feeling I'm getting my strength back, man. Like I, it's like I put my Samson locks back on cuz I'm back in the gym, man. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm my original me again, man. I'm getting there. Yeah. So what's your plan for the uh, the gym? So are you going in every single day right now? No, I do four, four or five days. Okay. Four or five days. Yeah, man. So I drop off my son to school and then hit the gym, circle back, get showered up, and mm -hmm. get ready to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, today is Martin Luther King holiday, technically in the U.S. Um, is is MLK celebrated in Jamaica? Not in the way that it is. He is in the U in the U.S. Um, okay. So we have any we have something similar. Well, it's not a birthday of any person. We have Heroes Day, which includes icons like MLK. So of course, respect is here for for martin luther king jr but no it's not a, a holiday per se his anything about mlk okay, okay. so of course you would hear garvey in the discussion on a regular on this mm -hmm. side and others that you would know but not mm -hmm. as a like equivalent federal holiday because mm -hmm. clearly he's from the states and mm -hmm. not, not jamaica but respect mm -hmm. definitely is here for mm -hmm. mlk jr interesting love it okay good yeah okay well um Brother LDH, we have been talking about for the last several weeks getting <laughs> getting into 2023. Mm -hmm. 2023 is here. Yep. And and many of the metrics that we've been talking about has been around mastering self, authenticity, and so forth. Mm-hmm. But we've been having such a great discussion, you know, like like to talk about mastering your authenticity, which is what we're talking about today. I want to circle back to some of the questions that came in after our call. You know, I love those, right? <laughs> like I love I love those questions. <laughs> well, they've been good, too, for the last couple of weeks. So it's, it's nice to be able to to answer questions that that people rewatch the show and then they circle back with some questions. So the first question is from Lindy Mackey. Um, she says, how did you know your passion um, in what you are doing today? Like, how did you come to develop that? I don't know from the beginning how it happened. I just remember thinking as a young boy, I mean, literally like a young boy, I want to go into psych and law. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I got to university, I actually, well, let me just say before university, I found myself like a step ahead in of people in terms of their behavior and what, what to expect from them. Mm -hmm. So it was a knack. But by the time I got to university, I actually chose psychology as a major. And then later on, I got into behavior modification and management. And it was in that moment, Tyrell mm -hmm. and our sister Mackie. Listen, 
when I was in there, like for some reason I excelled, I'm talking about in the career, I excelled. And when my coworkers, we had a lot of, I mean, we had scores of coworkers mm -hmm. um, who all got the same training. And most of my coworkers said, this stuff doesn't work. And I'm like, what do you mean? Of course it works. You guys just not, they're not applying the principles correctly. And so, of course, then I eventually, after three and a half years, got got promoted. The mm -hmm. psychologist, I don't know how you see Judge Judy. Mm -hmm. So just whatever way you see her, the mm -hmm. psychologist who was in charge of all of our behavior plans and whatever that ran in the organization was like the psych version of Judge Judy, whatever yeah. you think about her. <laughs> so we didn't answer to her, but I promise you, our jobs were really like hanging in the balance. Like if you didn't satisfy Dr. Fill in the Blank, who was yeah. like Judge Judy, and she and I worked perfectly together because like I loved it and it helps me in relationships. It also helps me in organizational work, too, because mm -hmm. I get ahead of challenges most times based on this. So. It's a win for me, man. I like developing people. Let's go. Mm, mm. I love this. So the next question comes from Charlotte, uh, Charlotte Taylor. Mm -hmm. And she says, thank you very much for um, what you have been teaching for the last couple of weeks. How do you and where do you see trends over the next three to five years? What trends? I need you to help me, Tyrell. Trends. Yeah. I think she's referring to behavior modification. Like, how do you see people having a self-awareness over the next three to five years? Okay, yeah. So what I'm seeing is, you know, social media has kind of changed the game. Before, it was almost novel. But now, mm. you know, everybody wants a piece, whether for good or for ill, you know. That's good. But social media is making the awareness turn all the way up. And so even the 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 industry of coaching has taken an incredible leap. It's not only these icons that, you know, like Dr. Eric Thomas and others who are in it now. There are people who have seen some value in it who are getting appropriately trained. And then, of course, as with any industry, people are, mm -hmm. are making a mess of it. And so in the actual psych industry, even the therapists are coming out and saying, wait, 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 pause. What is this coaching stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. And this is how you determine whether it's good coaching mm -hmm. that can be of service to you. So social media turned it up, man. And and icons like like Dr. Eric Thomas and some other motivational speakers who have their 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 approach to it have really kind of put it to the forefront. Yeah, that's good. And uh, shout out to Dr. Dr. Thomas and Boos and uh, the and, uh, yeah. team over there. Yeah. They are doing a fabulous job. And it looks um, like, sorry, Tyrell, looks like I went oblique to it. So in three to five years, I think the self-awareness continues and and more people will be clear because it's either get on the train or get run over by it. And most people mm -hmm. are not interested in getting run over by the train. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, last question is from uh, Dexter. Looks like Dexter. I can't say his last name. We'll just say Dexter T. Mm -hmm. Dexter T said, Dexter T said um, thank you very much for the information that you're giving. Uh, I am looking to build my business and scale. How do you select good people. Okay. Well, it depends on the business, but the good people has two, well, multiple prongs, but two that matter to me at this moment in the short answer. One, you have to, obviously, once you are clear about your business and your business model, you need to determine what are the required skill sets. If you're building widgets, then you need people who know how to build widgets or are trainable, right? Mm -hmm in that case right so you 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 begin with skill set but you don't hire yet mm -hmm. skill set is the baseline but then like tyrell and i talk about all the time based on an assessment or an awareness of people a clear awareness of people then you strategically place your workers or contractors based on aptitude 
for mm. example, or behavior style, if you like that better. So, mm. for instance, I'll use me as a bad example. If you're not a widget maker, you are a hosp- in the hospitality industry. And in that aspect of the industry, you have a welcoming committee. People come mm. into your place of whatever and your first people, like your first line, you don't want people like me who are more what we call air traffic control and grounds crew in my case, right? Mm-hmm. Who are more, I'm a, I'm a sincere introvert. So the camera comes on and then I can come out, but I'm really like ready for the camera to go off because it makes mm-hmm. me tired, right? Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. want an individual more like a flight attender or a team of flight attendants who understand what your goals are, understand what the with the with the what you're trying to 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 put forward to the public, and those are your front line, because not only are they skilled, but they have the behavior style that lights up the room, that is welcoming, that is extroverted, and then you pass them a- along the journey uh, of of for your clientele in the appropriate station. So. That's what matters. Skill set and then aptitude. Those are the mm. those are the two that you want to start with in order to choose the right workers or contractors. Yeah, I like that. You know, you can also use it as a you can use that formula as a way to um, push you <laughs> towards your greatness as well. Correct. Like I was I was on the men's call and someone said something that was. Like, yeah, of course, like, duh, like, like people who inspire you or people who motivate you and push you like you want to keep them as close as you can utilizing the formula that you just said. That's right. Because naturally we are inspired and motivated by people, but there is actually a formula by which we can actually take in a place to be able to not only scale, but but to also push you to your own greatness. Yes, sir. I want to give a bonus because you have Tyrell over there with his nice white glasses, white rim glasses today. So if you are the owner, CEO, president, whoever is in charge of your company or business, you and you're not a pilot, you're not a take charge kind of person. What you would do in a from a maturity perspective, say, well, I already know I call the shots. So there's no question about that. There's no threat because I hold the bag and it's my company or I'm in charge. Mm-hmm. But I but I realize that I'm really not kind of that person. So I need a Tyrell mm-hmm. who's a boss. Mm-hmm. And once Tyrell understands co- co- clearly his position in the company or organization, whatever, on the team, Mm -hmm. he still in his authentic self, his authentic voice is going to lead. And you will not allow, because you're becoming mature as you listen to us, especially, Mm -hmm. you will not allow naysayers, board members, uh, people in the constituency to say, Tyrell's taking over. No, he's Mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Tyrell isn't taking over. Tyrell is doing what Tyrell does as a legit pilot. He's doing what he does best. And you, as the person who's in charge, know, wait a minute. No, he's not a threat. I need somebody like him. Otherwise, we're going to freeze. And we can't can't afford to freeze this way. We cannot. Well, well, and I think that that's, that's what you're saying is that you can flip it. That's right. Because when you understand the the behavior styles of other people, then you can tap into their greatness. That's right. And allow the it's kind of like giving them steroids because now you you're tweaking, well, maybe not tweaking, but maybe injecting uh, extreme motivation to their personality so That's that right. they can accomplish the task that is at hand. It's like you want to run something. I got something for you to run. And and look, it makes it better for me because I'm really not that dude. You run it. Let's go. Come on. What else? What do you need? What do you need? What you want me to do? <laughs> My name is still on the check, Tyrell. But yeah. listen, you are the boss because that's your style. And I'm comfortable with that. I embrace it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. I think... I think politics has an issue with understanding that, but that's that's probably a whole nother. Uh, I think segment. that's another segment. <laughs>
That's the end of the segment. All right. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Today's topic is about mastering authenticity. Uh, we want to tap into the authenticity by which we have been going into uh, on a weekly basis. We've been going at it from a different perspective, but today we want to talk about the top seven, like like really getting into the authenticity of who I am, who you are. Um, so, Dave, let's 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 go uh, the deep into that, and let's go through the top seven on how to master you and I authenticity. All right. So here, here's the thing, Tyrell, in my authentic writer voice, because that is the baseline of everything I do. I said, I'm going to challenge myself when we were talking about it. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to use the letter A for all top seven because I'm a writer. So that, that's it's, this is a clinic about authenticity. You didn't say I needed to use the letter A, but I'm using the letter A. So with let's the first go. one, let's go. The first one, we're going to achieve a master of authenticity degree, man. Mm -hmm. So you've heard of MBAs, you've heard of master of arts in whatever, master of science in whatever. But what we're doing now is giving out degrees, not us for real, but mm -hmm. we're giving out degrees as you graduate from the base level understanding to master of authenticity for yourself. Mm -hmm. Like at the outset, you want to see where you can improve and let this mastery be like a journey that never ends. Like uh, I think it was St. Jerome said, good, better, best, never let it rest until yes. the good get better and the better best. And somebody else I know improved that and said, good, better, best, never let it rest until the good get better and the better, better. Mm. So mastery is not a destination. You don't get this degree and then that's it. Like that's the end of it. No. You continue the process of achievement of self mastery. So that's a principle. You're like, you're still mm. on the how, like, what do we do next? But the principle is embrace that. Mm. I must mm. master my, as you can see over my shoulder, that's a helix. That's a mm. DNA thing. Like I need to know, well, I won't go ahead of myself, but myself, DNA mm -hmm. style, this is it. So that's number one. I like that because you're almost stating to the world, to yourself, that, look, I'm going to get a PhD. Yes, sir. In mastering myself, making mm -hmm. that commitment, because you know that along the journey of getting your PhD, there's going to be several days of commitment, yes, sir. sacrifice, things that you may not want to do or learn about yourself mm -hmm. that you are going to have to go down. So I like that. I like that. Okay, that's clear. So mastering self in your authenticity, getting a PhD in your authenticity of the journey. Okay, what's the next one? All right. So now that we have already decided, like, because you, because everything that matters is based on an active decision. So that's what number one was about, right? Mm -hmm. Number two is assess your reality. Mm -hmm. Who are you? From where did you come? Like, you can't say who you are without at least taking a stab at from where did you come? And I realize, and I want to be sensitive here, Tyrell, there are some people who don't know from where they come. They may not know their father. They may not even know their mommy. Like right. I know a woman who was, who's an elder to me, who was thrown in a dumpster and somebody as a, as an infant, umbilical cord uh, severed mm -hmm. in a dumpster. And then somebody retrieved this woman who's now a woman. And so she may not have all the answers, but she knows what culture she came from. She know mm -hmm. how she was socialized. She knew that her experience in as as for whatever reason being discovered in a dumpster. So that's part of her story still. And it does it does inform behavior. It does inform how I see myself. Mm -hmm. So assess my reality from where I came why I am this way, mm -hmm. and how it impacts my progress. 
So mm-hmm. assessment is key. And you and notice the term I'm saying. I'm saying reality, not perception. If you have a bad temper, assess the fact mm. and don't try to bury it. Like, don't try to make it not be so. Mm-hmm. If you are very friendly to the point that sometimes people attempt to take advantage of you, assess your reality, understand it, but don't necessarily make it a crime. We're not making it a crime at this point. We're dealing with the reality. Now, if the reality has to do, again, with a character flaw or a moral Mm -hmm. problem, then that's a different Mm -hmm. thing we'll get into. Mm -hmm. But whatever is true, uh, you have to continue to assess it and say, all right, this is true. Put it on the board. This is true. This is true. This is true. This is true. Now, now that's funny because I I was going to be like, like some people perception they feel like is their reality. And that's sometimes very, very hard to distinguish. It is. So so you're saying, look, slow down. Pause. That's right. And know what the facts are to the situation. Yeah. I'm going to tell a secret to your friends, your audience. I never have never told anybody. I've told one or two individuals this. I'm not going to tell you the title because I can't tell you everything. So (laughs) I am a writer of extreme and I have pseudonyms or pen names. Mm -hmm. I have a woman one. Huh? Yeah. I have a woman one because Uh I have expertise in some stuff that if you saw my name, L David Harris, you wouldn't pick up the book. Yeah. So I have one that it was, it's four women in a woman's name and voice about body image problems. It's not that only women have them, but I was dealing with a particular issue. Yeah, yeah. Body image, and it was to encourage women, not from a male's voice, but from her voice. Mm. So I told Mm. you my secret. Mm. And so what happens, not only where body image challenges are concerned, and sometimes we need to learn how to embrace the reality of our body and not necessarily what we see and perceive because distortions come with body image problems, which is why they're a challenge. Mm -hmm. There are also distortions in our mindset where our character, our behavior styles are concerned. Sometimes we have idealized how some of the people that are more popular than us Mm -hmm. look to us. And we say, Mm -hmm. we're that person. Mm -hmm. Listen, some of you know that I, that I have a program with quest green, right? Quest Green has always been popular. Mm-hmm. He's always been that dude. Well, I was the extreme opposite. I was not popular. Now, people tell me all kind of stuff in my adulthood that sounds real positive, but I lived myself. I lived my life when I was young. I was the opposite of Quest Green. Mm-hmm. So I could have probably distorted my vision and say, boy, I'm Quest Green. I'm popular. Uh huh. <laughs> and then try to behave like Quest, which would have made me an imposter, and I would have never gotten whatever I perceived the reward was for Quest's reality. Mm. Mm. All the while missing what my actual rewards were about who I was. Mm. Because I want to be Quest. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves this dude. He's the mm-hmm. life of the party. And they're always calling his name, not David's name, when we were young boys. <laughs> But the truth is, as we are in our, like, we're the, we're in the half century mark now. Quest and I run together. And as far as the public is concerned, even though he's still the life of the party and I'm still not, people are clear on the value that both of us have. Because I've embraced, I've always embraced who I am, even when it was painful. And all I wanted to do was make the, the good better and the better better. There's some contribution that I make to the world. And as long as I don't try to be an imposter or allow the distortion of my behavior, style, image, mess up my brain, Mm -hmm. then what I contribute turns up because Mm -hmm. I don't have, I don't, I'm not bringing the baggage of trying to be somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you know, I play football um, and I realize, yeah, I, I realize that some 
guys had real great talents. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what you're saying is that I may not have the speed in a Mm -hmm. 40, Mm -hmm. but I have people around me and teammates that have that speed. So, so understanding the reality and maybe we can say gifts or superpowers of others Mm -hmm. actually, actually gives us a greater gift than maybe the actual gift of someone else. You see, there you are. Okay. 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 So, so from, so from where I came, we can't ignore it, even if we don't understand it fully, but we should be students of that forever from Mm -hmm. where I came and what, and assess my reality including what I manifest. So we can call it um, 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 inherited and cultivated. Inheritant, inherited is my DNA. Who came before me? Who are my ancestors, forebearers, or whatever you want to call them? And what have I cultivated as I have lived on this planet Earth? What is that reality? And then we work from there. That's good. Okay, number three. All right. So number three, we we accept the facts of my reality. Right. So accept the facts. We are assessing the facts. We were assessing the facts before, but now we're we're in that space of acceptance. We accept it. Do I feel guilty? Or less than because of my reality? Okay. Okay. Right. Mm hmm. So now yeah. it go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. because yeah, because this was uh, this was um, kind of hard to chew on. So a- accepting acceptance of the reality is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> of course not, especially if I have a distorted mental emotional image. Right. Right. Okay. I'm gonna let you go because the the. the Continue on that process because acceptance is hard to chew depending on where people are at in their life. But this is kind of almost where you almost pivot to another stage of your development. So here's the problem that you're having while you're talking about this, Tyrell. And there are a lot of people having the same problem. Maybe people are mishearing acceptance as agreement with even the bad parts. Mm, mm. So if I'm an, I'm going to pick the, I'm going to pick a a scenario that people may not necessarily love, right? Here is a scenario that I think you'll understand, right? If I am an alcoholic, (laughs) right? So we're going to pick something that's less than desirable and people try to hide from. If the individual is an alcoholic, if they are going on the pathway to success or maybe not alcoholic, maybe uh, some other drug, methamphetamines, you're addicted to quaaludes, now you know my age, Mm -hmm. or something else that clearly is debilitating, right? So acceptance of that doesn't say that it's okay on the negative side. What it does now is it positions me to say, wait a minute, but I need a power outside of myself in order to go beyond my reality. Now, the reality is not always bad, but I think that's the challenge that human beings have. We always see the the negative side. So it's like... Mm -hmm. It's like, what what do you mean by accept it? Like, what does that mean? Like, so status quo is okay, mediocrity is okay, and that's just it? No, 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 no. If you are great and wonderful in all ways, then you accept that. Mm -hmm. And when people come to you and try to disrespect you and bring you down and say, you're not all that, then accepting the fact that you are all of that says, even though they have made it a crime, that when I walk in the room, I own the place, not because I'm trying to, Mm -hmm. but it's just the way I am. Not talking about me, but other people, right? If you own the place, when you step up in the room and people begin to excel and exceed what people expect of them, don't Mm -hmm. let the naysayers, we're talking about accepting yourself. Don't let the Mm -hmm. naysayers cause you to, in the name, in the, in the voice of our friend and, and coach, fellow coach Cola, her name is Cola. 
-hmm. she's from from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Don't dim your light because other people say you're too bright. Turn it down because I'm because I'm inept, because I'm insecure, I'm unwell. You dim your light. No, acceptance says I keep the light on. Mm -hmm. And then on that negative side, if 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 my reality is that there are some things that really need to be worked on, I really need to work on them. Then the fact and reality still isn't a crime. Mm -hmm. But you just say, like, I'm I'm an alcoholic. I need to, that needs to change. Like, I need to work on that. Like, so I'm not anymore because it's hurting my family. It's hurting my health, right? Potentially hurt somebody on the road if I get behind the wheel of a car. So I accept that reality. And then I say, all right, what next? Mm -hmm. So the crime is staying that way. Even if you're wonderful, if you stay that level of wonderful for two more days, it's a crime now because you haven't chosen to grow anymore. You thought yeah. it was, you thought you were good to go. So that's it. No, it's not, that's not okay either. So my reality is this. And if you don't accept that, then you have no way that you could possibly grow in a true sense. Mm -hmm. Well, I, it's going back to what you said as number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm accept the fact that this is going to be a journey to yes, sir. to obtaining your PhD in your authenticity. Number two, the reality, the reality by which is factual. Like, mm -hmm. like we're getting out of the non-judgmental zone. Ah, that's it. Of judging it. ourselves as well as others. Correct. That's good. That's it. <laughs> That's and it. then and then three, the acceptance. The acceptance of the reality, but making sure that we are creating a reality that is in line with a future. That's right. Okay, what's number four? All right, activate a plan of continual improvement. Oh, oh. Activate, that's the A, because we're getting all A's here. While we yeah. master self, we master our authenticity, we're shooting for A's. So we activate a plan for continual improvement. This requires self-study continually and assessment. So <sighs> these these levels, we see them rinse and repeat. So it's not like you graduate from one to two to three. No, they work together. There is a cohesion here. And there are times when we're at a point, a certain point on our continuum that we need to revisit number two. Mm -hmm. We need to revisit the commitment from number one. Mm -hmm. We need to revisit this other area because something got lost in the sauce, right? So activate a plan for continual improvement now we go back to our goal setting motif. We talked about that on, on our discussions here, uh, Tyrell. Mm -hmm. So continual assessment, yes. Active planning, yes. Oh, now we need to get into that goal setting and achievement space in our brains. Mm -hmm. So we don't get stuck in number th numbers two and three. So this kind of goes back to some of the other conversations a few weeks ago on mastering routines. Correct. Ah, so now we're tying in activation with routines and systems that that creates the authenticity of who we are. Yeah, so I was I did a, a presentation, a, a workshop really for educators, right? And and one of the teachers came to me. She this is what see this is what she wanted, right? Mm -hmm. She wanted to use our assessment and interaction with L. David Harris in a way that was not appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I knew because of the way she opened up when she came to me. First of all, she sat behind me and wanted me to talk to her over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I did in a in, in in not a threatening way was fill in the blank name. I don't know her from Adam, mm -hmm. but what's your name? This is my name. Okay, I need you to come around. 
and sit in front of me so I can speak to, so I can see you. So she's mm -hmm. already hiding mm -hmm. her, 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 what she's, her, her authentic self is hiding because maybe I projected power. Maybe she felt vulnerable because now it looked like I'm reading everybody's mind in the room, which I'm not, but I'm just good mm -hmm. at this. Mm -hmm. And so she's just like, dude, if I stand up in front of this dude, then maybe he's going to see more, but mm -hmm. I do need to talk to him. So what I did now is positioned her so that she has to face whatever the little challenge was in her mind, but also now feel when she sees me face to face that we're not squaring up. Mm -hmm. It's a welcoming space. Like, yeah, so let's talk. What are you feeling? What are you needing? And then she begins to say something about her therapist and therapy, and she really needs to drill whatever with me with this. And I'm like, pause. Mm -hmm. And then I, talk to her about her therapy sessions and whatever. And it occurred to me that it's a, it's a good situation she's in and that she should embrace that situation, not derail it mm -hmm. by misplacing coaching, derail therapy mm -hmm. by positioning coaching in the wrong space. Mm -hmm. It would have killed her mm -hmm. dead. Like it would have killed this stuff we're talking about now, man, ma mastering your authenticity, it would have derailed her process. So I didn't allow pride to say, boy, therapist must not be working out too good because she's coming to me right now after <laughs> two hours of talking. No, 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 no. Therapy is therapy. And this yeah. is this. Yeah. You need to not, you need to make sure you do not derail your plan for improvement. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is good. Now, now, what are some strategies to recognize activities that work and and maybe don't work? Because you just said that maybe she she positioned herself behind you because of her identity. Mm -hmm. Is is there a strategy to notice by which you can? observe your blind spots and or triggers yes but it's a lot of work uh and and you you need because it's a it's called blind spot for a reason right so in a vehicle i guess you guys who are not you know as um should i say mature as tyrell and i you may not even know what blind spot means, right? Because you got cam, you got 360 cameras, you got cameras under your front bumper, behind you. So there's literally no, no such thing as a blind spot. This comes from a vehicle. And there's a point in the, in the vehicle where if in your, what we call rear view mirror, that center mirror, you can't see something in a lane that's behind you on either side. That means it moved up into a space where you couldn't detect it. So if I'm already in a, at a disadvantage and I can't detect it, then I need, I need a tool to be able to reveal what was sitting just outside of the spot where that camera, that camera, see, look at that. The, the mirror could have picked it up. So sometimes yeah. the tool is a person. Sometimes the tool is an assessment you would have taken and gotten some help from and you have to go back to it, pick it back up, open it up, look at it again, because you've already written notes. So the blind spot is called blind spot for a reason. And you can go back to your tool that helped to open your eyes, the person, the assessment, or both, the group setting where you're continually improving together. And that those settings are spaces where the blind spots stop being as blind because you have a measure mm -hmm. or an environment access in order to reveal those that used to be blind. Yeah. I spots. love it. I love that. Okay. Okay. So this is good because I feel like you are laying out a blueprint, a really simple blueprint in mastering you and I and we authenticity so that we can get to the core mm -hmm. of the very essence of who we are. You said, number one, like make the commitment to mastering 
or getting that master's or that PhD in authenticity. Mm -hmm. Number two, knowing the reality, the data points, the metrics by which serves you in a non-judgmental factor. Yeah. Where did I come from? How did I get here? Why am I this way? Just generically. Like, what is this? Yeah. yeah. Number, number three, you said acceptance. But acceptance in a way that is congruent kind of with your DNA, your, 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 your very nature self. But closing the gap in number four with activities that that bring about relevate um spring into place the things that are more more relevant to who you are and who you are becoming that's right that's mm -hmm. right because if i don't accept me then what i'm putting in p position as growth on the growth path it's not gonna work it's like putting, uh, what did they say? What kind of peg in a square hole? A circle, a round peg in a square hole. You'll beat it until it's bruised and battered and maybe it'll get in there, but there are gonna be gaps because one is square and one is round. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the right position, square to square, round to round, and it goes right in, even if there's a little friction, once mm -hmm. that thing is fit in there, it's like, whoa, seamless. This is great, wait, hold mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. This worked out. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go to number five. Yeah. Amplify each moment of life. Ooh. Ooh. I'm going to start with negative because, I mean, we used to say we only have today. Uh, I think when we were kids, there that show, what day, uh, One Day at a Time, was a sitcom. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I know a leader, a thought leader. Man, he was in New York City doing big things. He was an attorney at law, a pastor, had a PhD in something wonderful. And he was leading, a, you know, a lot of like thousands of people in his industry. And then he was no longer there and moved to Minnesota. This dude is a Dominican. He's from the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. So he's doing big things in the United States of America. Well, listen, a few days ago, he went to bed but he didn't get back up out of that bed mm -hmm. with all of his greatness, all of his influence, all that he overcame. Now, I know how he was. I knew that every moment he seized. So no regrets where your legacy is concerned. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the end of the day. Don't wait for later for things that are critical at this moment if your brain brings that thing up whatever it is to the surface and says this is critical right here do not wait for later because you have to amplify this moment mm -hmm. and if you live for another moment i didn't say minute i said moment mm -hmm. that's why everything i don't know if y'all get this right but when i'm doing something like we're having this interaction I'm firing on all cylinders because I don't think I'm, I don't necessarily know I'm going to get another opportunity. Yeah. Straight mm -hmm. up. Like I'm not, I don't have morbid thoughts, but I'm like, I, this is the moment that we get to change somebody's life. Mm -hmm. This is the moment that I get to grow in my own space and my life can change for the better. Mm -hmm. So if I put that so, off to later, I don't have that later. I don't got, I don't know about later. Okay. So, I mean, this is good. It's a great formula. But people out in the world and they're like, yeah, that sounds good, David, you know, because that's you. But, um, you know, you don't understand. There's a lot of negativity around me. I deal with a lot of negative folks. How do you what do you say to that? It, it depends on who's speaking to me, because if somebody close to me says that, like, let's put Quest in the in the room, room again, because we grew up together. Mm -hmm. They're like, wait, hold up, pause, hold up, pause. That's easy for me to say. Because he knows my upbringing. He knows where mm -hmm. I've come from. He knows that I've had to do the same work that I'm saying that we all can and must do. 
your temperament, your behavior style may not manifest it in the way that I am coming across, but the fact is still the fact. Mm -hmm. When I was abused in every way that a person gets abused, I could have said the same thing. Tyrell, that's easy for you to say. Mm -hmm. And I could go down the list, right? But the fact is, I know where I came from. Mm -hmm. I accepted that, even though I didn't agree with a lot of it, bro. Trust mm -hmm. me, I don't agree mm -hmm. with a lot of where I came from. I don't agree with that. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'm praying sometimes. I'm, I'm in the public, and sometimes somebody does something or something comes across my pathway, and I actually pray, God, I don't agree with that. Because my DNA says, do the wrong thing. Like somebody welcomed me, invited me out of my vehicle on Friday. Mm. This guy wanted, he thought, <laughs> here's my bravado again. He thought that he wanted a violent problem with me. So he mm -hmm. welcomed me out of my vehicle. He was like, get out the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, first of all, I'm pretty dangerous if I allow myself to be that way. But what is the negative impact? What is the impact? Mm -hmm. If I get out of the vehicle, what impact on my wife? What mm -hmm. impact on my son? What impact on the hundreds of cars behind me? What impact on the guy, the poor, the poor dude that thought he wanted smoke? That's good. And it was just like, oh, and by the way, you represent the king of the universe. This is not self-defense. So what do I have to do in that assessment, Tyrell? Yeah. Roll up the window. Mm -hmm. and put my foot on the gas of that 3,000 pound SUV mm -hmm. and move on. Mm -hmm. Because yes, easy to say, but it was hard to live. I was shaking. I was like, man, I was feeling myself do something wrong, but mm -hmm. I stayed in the vehicle with my seatbelt fastened and kept mm -hmm. it moving. Mm -hmm. So yes, you're right. It's easy to say and less easy to do. But in that moment, I had a decision to make. Mm -hmm. And and th th those decisions was like chess because each move could have been a a casualty mm -hmm. plus or minus in both you and their life, but could have ripple into oh, no yeah yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, I speak from my experience and sometimes you wonder, well, why does he always use those kinds of examples? Well, that, that's my, authentic my authenticity. Yes. This may not be your story, but you make decisions all day, every single day that may determine positive or negative outcomes. And it's never just about you. It's always going to impact a whole lot of somebody's. Mm. Beside you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay, next one. Abandon the blame game, man. Ooh. Abandon. Yeah, we're getting all A's here. Mm -hmm. Abandon the blame game. The facts about, about what people have done to you, I said facts. So I need you to hear me. For those who turned away or your brain switched off or your mind turned back on and you saw images and heard sounds from experiences that you've had because people abused or otherwise disrespected who you are. You heard all of that. You experienced that and you turned my voice off and started mm. to fight against it. Switch it back on. Mm. The fact mm. is the fact. These things did happen and it does matter and it mm. has negatively impacted you and they should be dealt with. And if it was a crime, they should be dealt with from a law, from a legal perspective and a criminal perspective. True. Yeah. yeah. People who were to take care of you did not. They abused you. Your socioeconomic status was not what you had hoped it should have been and your neighbors two sto two blocks away it was a much different situation than your situation that is all true and it all does matter there does come a point though that mature minded people who are on this growth path identify that recognize that Deal with it for however long you have to deal with it, but never ever are you to allow yourself to use it as an excuse mm -hmm. 
It can never be an excuse. Deal with those folks or situations, yes, but it can never be a limiting excuse to say, well, I will. That's why I can't fill in the blank positive outcome yeah. because somebody like, yeah, I won't give an example that yeah. will complicate it. I won't do it. You know, um, when you were speaking about that, what came to my mind immediately was the movie Sea Biscuit. You ever seen Sea Biscuit? No, I live under a rock. I've always lived under a rock. Well, at least <laughs> in the last 20, 30 years, I've been okay. under a rock. <laughs> okay. It's a very, very popular horse. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. But to me, the situation is very similar to us, is that this horse basically is so talented, but because of our environment, what we have gone to has suppressed us so much that when we say you have to unleash your greatness like you literally have to sometimes remove yourself from family, remove yourself from peers, friends, yeah. Yeah. things that suppress your ability to be great. And so there is a strategy, there is a method by which I believe what you're saying is, look, if you recognize your authenticity and you are aware, then what are the key components that are going to be required to unleash? It's like the lion in the cage. Well, yeah. the lion has been so trained. That's right. That regardless of you opening the door or the doors open for us in life, that we're going to take the opportunity to do it because we have been so conditioned. Hey, Tyrell, there, I had a little secret, right? So I worked in academic administration for, well, almost 15 years, mm -hmm. but in academia for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I was assistant registrar at a university and then did academic research Besides being in charge of the the um, I guess we used to call it INS, but the 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 I twenties, so that individuals coming from other countries could matriculate in the United States, mm -hmm. and re and I was in charge of uh, the the education benefits for the veterans and service members of the United States, every service at our university. Mm -hmm. The same university I dropped out from. It's not a badge of honor. It's just my reality. Mm -hmm. So when students would say, Mr. Harris, how did you get to where you are? Well, I couldn't say by dropping out because that would be bad mm -hmm. for what their growth path was. Mm -hmm. And then I went to another university and dropped out of that one because I was mm -hmm. chasing money. Mm -hmm. So like all of the risk factors, abuse, the hood, violence, poor family model, dropping out of university, all of that, plus more. So I have a lot of people to blame and a lot of circumstances to blame. But if I allow that to, to diminish the, who I am mm -hmm. and my growth, then there's no way in the world that I would have been able to do some of the stuff that if I say it, it sounds like bragging. So I won't. Mm -hmm. There's no way in the world I would have been places I've been, th done things I've done, influenced the kinds of people and helped to grow other humans. If I allowed the reality of where I come from, even when people have who have who who in an evil or and or disrespectful way negatively impacted my life. If I allow that stuff to continue to limit me, then shame on me. What's going to happen to my son? Yeah. What's going to yeah. happen to the people who look to me for, for assistance? You see? Was that like a light that clicked on that said, look, I got to, I have to take responsibility yes. for, for the outcome. Now, is that like a switch? Is that like a experience? Is that, like, how was that for you? Yeah. So I'm glad you said for me, because it depends on the person. 
for me, well, I kind of stumbled into like prominence. <laughs> so you got all these people looking at you for stuff that's positive. And I didn't know how I got there. I just kind of got there, right? I didn't know. It was before any switch came on. It's just like, whoa, look at this. How did people keep coming to me for this stuff? Why? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then the for me, because of my behavior style, I'm, res I'm a responsible and loyal person. Mm -hmm. Almost to the extreme. And so now I'm like, wait a minute. This person, so we start from the beginning, like this person is looking to me. Mm -hmm. Now I have a, a sense of responsibility and then it turns into these people and then it turns into thousands. Then it turns into tens of thousands of people who are looking to me for something positive because of my behavior style, my DNA. I'm driven not to let these people down. <laughs> I cannot afford to let these people down because there are people literally my phone is going off all day. Bling them, bling them, bling them, bling them mm -hmm. from different platforms because people are looking to who, who to me for positive things that are potentially life changing. And if I let anything disrupt that, then that means there are a lot of people who are going to have some negative outcome. Yeah. And I just, yeah. I'm th that's untenable to me. I can't afford to have that happen. Yeah, I can't allow good. that. Yeah, I just that's can't. Good. That's the that's switch good. that's flipped for me. Boop. That's good. Yeah. Okay. So we've been talking about mastering you and I, we authenticity. We talked about making the commitment of the life journey of getting your master's, your PhD in authenticity. But number two, knowing the reality by which you are in creating a non-judgmental zone for yourself and for others. Acceptance, accepting the fact of you are where you are because of who you are. Okay, yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> yeah, right, right, with other metrics. Activities, recognizing that the activities, the routines to support what we are looking to accomplish can help us achieve the authenticity that we are striving on. Mm -hmm. Number five, find a way to amplify what you are doing so that it supports your journey and your authenticity. One moment at a time. That's all I have. That eliminates worry and it and eliminates regret. Okay. Number six, the the stop the stop adopting the blame game Correct. stop looking for others to 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 blame why you and i are not doing one two and three right even though we identify and say it is a fact I'm I'm taking the po the most positive approach. It is a approach. fact, and it was wrong. It was Correct. yeah, yeah. You All were wrong. That. I was wrong. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But the the fact of the matter is is I am aware. It's no longer serving me. It's no longer adding value, and I need to get past this in every form that my body can. That's right. So if somebody yeah. kicks my feet out from under me and I end up push into some mud pit. I can sit in the mud pit dirty and muddy and with mud in my mouth and say, it's your fault. But at some point you need to get out of there and, 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 and take and, and get the shower. And, and if you, if your foot hurts, then get that fixed too. Okay. This is yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the last one. Our, our seventh, Item for today in mastering you and I authenticity is accentuate the positives. Oh, and, and when I say that, people say, "Are you an optimist? Are you a pessimist?" I'm not. Well, I'm neither. See, that's just kind of my nature, Tyrell. Like I never mm -hmm. really fit into any of the little, the ways we describe ourselves. Mm -hmm. I call myself as an always sufficientist. Right. So yeah. if there's water in the cup. I'm not thinking, is it half full, half empty? I just know that when I tip it over, water's coming into my body. 
Mm-hmm. At every single moment that I need, I have it. So that's where I am. So I'm not saying be like super positive and hype yourself. I, what I'm saying is, in the United, I'll just pick the United States. In the United States of America, part of what has bro- been broken in the university system mm-hmm. has been remediation, like remedial work. Mm-hmm. So if little whoever, child, youth, is having a challenge in this area, then we throw boatloads of money and resources to deal with remedial stuff. (laughs) Prop up what's broken, fix the broken stuff. (laughs) All the while ignoring, wait a minute, they are super strong in this area. (laughs) Positive, bing. (laughs) So they focus all their money, their resources, attention, academic councils <laughs> and all kind of meetings trying to fix broken stuff. I'm yeah. not saying don't, I'm not saying ignore broken stuff. What I am saying though is if there's something that's functional and working in a positive sense, throw a ton of resources there, mm-hmm. accentuate that stuff, turn it mm-hmm. up. Because mm-hmm. quite frankly, a lot of times that is the answer to the who am I mm-hmm. question. Mm-hmm. You're looking at the positive stuff and then just saying, well, that one's good. So just leave it there <laughs> and it'll work itself out. Like, no, turn that up, man. Accentuate yeah. that. So you're almost like saying like pause. Like when yeah. you recognize when when there is something great in your life or you're grateful for something in your life. Yeah. Like that is a good, great sign to accentuate. Correct. That was a great, that was a great word you use. Um, to amplify the situation that could that could be more even routineish, if you would, because in order to be great, you almost have to be grateful. Yeah, by show of hands, like who who is and who is uh, motivated by failure? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you failed in this area, boom! You failed in this area. You're not so great in this area. Now we're gonna we're gonna fix those, and you'll be wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, success breeds success, right? So when I see something working, which is why in behavior modification and management, I'm interrupting myself. Yeah. There are a couple of things that we used. One was a, an, a, a um, praise. Mm-hmm. So we're going we're gonna to spy on Tyrell. Mm-hmm. And it's the moment that Tyrell does anything that even remotely looks like progress or success, I'm going to say Tyrell. I noticed that you fill in the blank positive thing and I'm turning yeah. it up. I'm like, I'm like, Tyrell, this is so wonderful about you, about what you did. Keep yeah. going. Yeah. And then yeah. there is another schedule. So that's the praise schedule. And then there's the reinforcer or reinforcement schedule. Ooh, so now nice. it becomes tangible on some interval. And you know, what? you get and a you, bonus, bro. Let's yeah. go. You get something you can touch. You can see, you can hold. <laughs> Let's go. So, you know, I, as you're saying it, I almost feel like because I'm looking at myself, I, I'm putting the mirror up to myself first. And I'm like, you know, um, I I accentuate, I amplify the good in others uh, a lot, like mm-hmm. probably, probably more than the average person, because you definitely do. because I think I, now now I don't know if it's selfish because I grew up as the only child. So is it in some way that I'm like, look, I'm amplifying your greatness that maybe you will recognize maybe greatness in myself, right? Well, that's that's something that you in your assessment journey have to determine. But yeah. what, what, regardless of the answer though, whether it's positive or not positive, the fact or the action of accentuating others positive is still yeah. good. You yeah. got to work yeah. on the, the wellness part and yeah. healing if there needs to be, but still yeah. do the, the action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just I'm just putting the mirror up to myself because I like I like authenticity. I like to understand why I do what I do so that I can amplify it. And if it, you know, if if it's a true non-judgmental zone, then then there really is no intention behind it because it is reality. Mm-hmm. But that helps accentuate a great community because yeah. we recognize the greatness in others. 
And we're also recognizing the reality of, okay, this is what we need to go. Okay, let me just- Wait, wait, pause, pause. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. one more time. I know, you, I know you're dry, you're flying. You're flying the plane. <laughs> one more thing. So there are times, Brother Tyrell, that we do things to create an environment that creates growth for me. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not going to pull your brain apart in this thing because this is your program. Mm -hmm. But the way you put people together, yeah, it does help you. And you knew that. You know that. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just put I'll put a pause on that so I, so I keep my promise not to, to pull it apart in here. But yeah. yeah. So probably unconsciously in, in the past, but now more consciously because yeah. I, I see the greatness coming out of it. So. Oh man, brother LJ, thank you, brother, for for giving us the seven tools of authenticity. Make the commitment, have the reality, have the acceptance, create the activities that will help and support your journey, amplify the situation by which the moment is here. Adopt. Uh, the no blame game. Stop Stop going after your past and blaming mm -hmm. others for your future. And mm -hmm. then last but not least, amplify the positive. And I almost go back to the moment. Amplify the moment, regardless to what the situation is, so that it can be amplified on many levels. Yes, sir. That's it, man. And 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 then and and you didn't ask for more, but it's basically rinse and repeat. Yeah. At whatever sure. point on this journey, something doesn't quite go, then you go back to the top. Yeah. It doesn't set you back, you know. What it does is is causes you to continue to grow. That's good. That's it. Brother LDH, Brother David, um, give us some last parting words in your authenticity and when, where they can find you. Yeah, so you have to master your authenticity. Otherwise, you will be an imposter. Nobody wants to see an imposter. At some point, you'll be exposed and there's nothing positive in, in that situation. So master yourself, master your authenticity. You can find me at ldavidharris.com or like I say often, I prefer Google, man. Just put my names in the parentheses, quote, open quote, L, full stop, space, David, space, Harris, close the quote, and whatever you find, then holla at me. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, guys, if you're watching this live and on the replay, we so appreciate you tuning in. If you have questions along the way, like you've been throwing them into us, we highly appreciate you tapping in. And we'll be sure to have that on a weekly basis. Tune in next week as we go with much, much deeper on our authenticity. Happy MLK Day.